Google's AI Alpha Geometry is incredible at solving math Olympiad problems, but for me, there are two key concepts that I don't want you to miss. Let's just jump straight into the results. They looked at 30 math Olympiad problems from 2000 until 2022, and the y-axis shows you how many problems were successfully solved. So the previous day of the art, it is important to know that this is from 1978, solved 10 problems. The best participants, the gold medalists, so that's the top 10% of the participants of the math Olympiad, solved on average 25.9 problems. And the alpha geometry is just shy of that between the silver and the gold medalists. It solved 25 problems. If you want more information about this research, I suggest you read the Nature article, which was published just this week. There's also a blog published by uh, Google DeepMind on their uh, blog website, which is also a pretty good overview of the research. But I highly recommend this uh, video from the first author of the paper. Uh, which is styled the alpha geometry. I put the link in the description below, which goes really nicely over the concepts. It's uh, 22 minutes long, but if you are really interested in how this thing works, I highly recommend this video. The model overview is shown in figure 1b right here, but I think it's much better described in the blog and in the video. So let's go into the blog right here. So imagine you have a simple geometry problem, and then it goes into the symbolic engine. This is kind of the old school um, engines that they use to solve mathematical problems. And if uh, the symbolic engine is able to solve the problem, then everything is good. It doesn't need the large language model. But the innovation is, is when the symbolic engine cannot solve this problem, it is not solved. It goes into this large language model, and that creates a magic construct. They also call it the rabbit. And I'll go into the video and show you uh, what exactly this means. So when you add this construct, it goes back into the symbolic engine. That should push it forward and maybe we'll solve it. If not, you repeat this process until you solve the problem. So let's go into the video to show exactly what this means. So you have the problem right here, and you have this magic construction, which is the hard part, which is the kind of the innovation of the paper. You go, uh, you create this construct, then you go into the mechanical solver, which is the more old school type of math. That's the what they call easy part. It's not easy for humans, but this is something you can easily learn. The hard part this is something where you need a talent or you need to spend a lot of time on mathematics. From here, from the easy part, if it needs further transformation, it goes into here. If not, it can go straight into the solution. Let's talk more about this magic construction, this rabbit idea. In the video around the three minute mark, I think the author gave a really fantastic example. So think about this equation right here. So four to the X power plus nine to the X plus one power equals six to the X plus one power. This problem looks scary to uh, any high schooler, I think. It's a really complex problem to solve if you don't have this special trick. So imagine this is the rabbit trick. This is the special construct that you either come up with if you are extremely gifted in mathematics or you do this type of problem so much that, that they kind of come naturally to you. This is some, I think, uh, to a point you can learn this skill, but you have to spend a lot, a lot of time on mathematics. And this is how people prepare for the math Olympiads. So imagine that A is equal to 2 to the x power. And now B is equal to 3 to the x plus 1 power. Now when you... Uh, use this a and b, you can transform this scary looking equation into something like this. a squared plus b squared equals 2ab. Then it turns into this really simple equation. You can see a is equal to b. Then you plug in the numbers and then you get your result. Current symbolic engines like Wolfram can easily do this. What they couldn't do is this uh, magic rabbit trick. So coming up with this a is equal to 2 to the x power and b equal to 3 to the x plus 1 power. The second key concept is that all of the data used to train this alpha geometry is synthetic data. So I'm familiar with the concept of synthetic data. A lot of times uh, people generate synthetic data to make uh, to augment their data set or to make it bigger. But in this case, they use 100% synthetic data. Figure 3 explains how they come up with the synthetic data, but I think it's uh, easier to understand it, how it's explained on the blog. So it, it says right here, using highly parallelized computing, the system started by generating 1 billion random diagrams of geometric objects and exhaustively derived all the relationships between the points and lies in each diagram. So these are examples of uh, the random uh, objects that uh, they generated. And then they used alpha geometry found all the proofs contained in each diagram, then work backwards to find out what additional constructs, if any, were needed to arrive at those proofs. We call this the process of symbolic uh, deduction and traceback. So I think if you don't uh, fully understand how this was done, that's okay. I just wanted to show you the concept of creating 100% synthetic data in this case. And I wonder if this can translate to other domains. Here in figure four, we have analysis of all the synthetic data that they generated to, uh, and then that was then used to train alpha um, uh, geometry. On the y-axis, we have the count of the synthetic examples. Know that this is a log scale. And then on the x-axis, we have the 
length of the synthetic proof. So it generated a lot of very simple proofs like this one right here, but they did get nice distribution of really complex proofs. So this was the most complex one with proof length of 247. And uh, they put a couple lines in here. Right here is a line is the average length of proof in the International Math Olympiads uh, for the geometry problems. So that was only 0.05% of the data. And here's an example from 2015 that had a length of 112 steps, and that was less than 0.001% uh, of the data. So you can see that the proofs can get really, really long. And also here, it shows you that 91% of this synthetic data was able to be solved completely just with the pure deduction. So that was the easy part of the model. And for 9%, you needed the magic rabbit. You need that little extra sauce to be able to solve these problems. In summary, I wonder if these two concepts could be applied to chemistry and pharmaceutical design. Just substitute math proofs with synthesis of new materials. We should be able to generate synthetic data in a similar manner. And the rabbit could be a novel way to produce medicine. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.